I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. First things first tonight, Plano has a lot of football talent, but now we have a Stanley Cup champion. Congratulations to Plano native Blake Coleman with the Tampa Bay Lightning, who closed out and won the Stanley Cup tonight in game six, unfortunately against the Stars. Uh, but congratulations to Blake, who's a Stanley Cup champion. Uh, moving on, the first thing on the preliminary open meeting was a discussion of campaign finance. This hinged on several things, such as uh, a, a contribution cap, uh, a discussion about PACs, including super PACs, which in the Citizens United case in 2010 uh, was said that people can contribute any amount they want to a super PAC, um, but the super PAC cannot have any coordination with a campaign. Uh, long story short, there was not enough support on council to move forward with the campaign finance ordinance. Uh, this brought us to Backyard Hens. Um, there was also not enough support to move forward tonight, but there was enough support to explore it come the budgeting process next year. And while it's felt that given the current uh, constraints on staff capacity, it would necessitate a full-time employee to handle the um, admittedly very incremental, very small number of additional uh, work and number of complaints, uh, et cetera, to animal services, um, I'd like to explore creative ways to not necessitate a full-time employee, maybe contracting with the county for a nominal amount. Uh, anything we can do to mitigate that cost and still provide the freedom for a small number of backyard hens for Plano residents, which uh, ha has no impact uh, on, on, on neighbors, at least no more than existing dogs do. Uh, a small number of hens are no smellier, um, and no noisier than a dog. In fact, considerably less, based on everything I've heard. Uh, we then move to CARES Act funding. <clears throat> the, uh, we are proposing $14,000 to the Frisco ISD within Plano because they have a need for PPE and, and as yet undetermined amount to the Louisville ISD, which also has campuses in Plano. Uh, we've determined to use the rest for civil services, which per is permitted under CARES Act, things like police and fire, the uh, increased needs under the pandemic. And if it comes to the, the need to establish additional small business aid, we, can, we did determine that we can use the general fund from that. So it's, it's kind of fungible. Um, we're not gonna lock ourselves out of additional small business relief if necessary. Uh, we put two items on a future agenda. Uh, I brought these up with uh, Councilwoman Two. Uh, first is a zoning shot clock. This is precipitated by the discussion that we'll get to in a moment about Beacon Square which development was approved in 2014, but nothing has happened with it since. <clears throat> so special districts, um, special zoning and planned developments mean that they don't conform to any existing zoning. So those are evaluated and approved based on the circumstances at the time. Things have changed a fair bit in the past six years. And so we wanna have a shot clock for these. If you do not break ground, maybe even complete development within a certain number of uh, years, then you've gotta go back through the process again and get reapproval. It just, it's an expiration date for uh, special zoning. The second uh, thing we wanna put on the uh, a future agenda is discussion of term limits for council appointees. We have three appointees, the city manager, the city attorney, and the uh, municipal court chief judge. Uh, so I imagine that each of those, because they're different roles, uh, would have different considerations in terms of the total number of years they can serve in that position, as well as the frequency with which their uh, contracts come up for renewal and reappointment. Um, moving on to the regular meeting, uh, we had two proc proclamations. Uh, the first is that October 2020 is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Likewise, October 2020 is uh, National Code Compliance Month. Uh, the first item for individual consideration was a specific use permit, an SUP, for, uh, to operate a private school and an existing daycare uh, off of Coyton Hedgecoax. Now, uh, the total number of students allowed at that school has not changed, the maximum has not changed, but they will be permitted to, add 40, to have 49 students in a private school, which would reduce the total number of daycare students allowed by 49. Uh, that passed um, without any real discussion. Uh, then we had a, um, a, a lengthy discussion on the Beacon Square redo. Now, this was the one that was approved in 2014. It came before council um, about a month and a half ago, a month and a half, two months ago, and uh, failed uh, four to four. <clears throat> they had made some changes since 2014 because, well, things have changed, like we were noting a moment ago. 
um, <clears throat> uh, the economy primarily, and they wanted to reduce the amount of retail they had because, uh, hey, retail has, uh, has not gotten any better during the pandemic. <clears throat> so uh, tonight, it ultimately passed five to three. One of the uh, big concerns that was raised, um, which, which I shared, was the phasing. There, one quarter of the proposed office space was required in phase one. Um, uh, I think uh, maybe a, a, a commensurate amount of the multifamily and uh, a tiny bit of the retail. In phase two, it would be a little bit more of the office space, maybe an additional 20, 25%, all of the rest of the multifamily, uh, bringing the total to over 1,100 units. And then in phase three, um, was uh, the rest of the office space, the remaining uh, 50 plus percent. And then in phase three or four was the remainder of the retail. Now, the big concern I had was that the nature of an urban mixed use development, which this was uh, intended to be, is that it does have a mix of uses. And um, with market conditions, I would want to see each of those uses, retail, residential, and office, grow commensurately with one another through each phase. Uh, but the phasing stayed the same, and the changes uh, to the application that was made a couple of months ago uh, were approved. Now, I would like to thank the developer and thank uh, Lucy Billingsley for taking the time to meet with several of us and, uh, and taking some of the suggestions to heart. One of the suggestions that I had when meeting with her was uh, to take some of the live work units, uh, which had originally in 2014 been meant to be right along a retail area. Well, in the redo this year, they moved the retail all out front, but left the live work units. Now, the nature of a live work unit is somebody has a small, uh, a small shop or a studio where they do business and they live above it or in the back or both. Um, but when you take the rest of the retail out of the equation, that, uh, that would cause the traffic that would um, bring business to those live work units to diminish. So they moved some of those live work units out by the, uh, the, the remaining retail to uh, promote that traffic. So just want to say thank you to Lucy Billingsley for taking those considerations to heart. Uh, the last thing we uh, addressed was the extension of the city manager's authority under the pandemic. Uh, this was extended to the end of the year, uh, rather to early January, because we didn't want it to, anything to happen in the middle of the holidays. It's important to note to note that uh, the city manager's authority does not give him the power to uh, create regulations or requirements, only to waive them and uh, to make certain spending decisions, which would then need to be ratified by council. Uh, that's it for tonight. Once again, congratulations to Blake Coleman with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'll see you next time. Thank you.